Hey, welcome to the video everybody. My name is Zach Hampson and today I'm going to show you through how I created this painting right here. So let's get to it. You can see I'm just starting up with my uh, basic sort of run of the mill method. So that involves starting from the sketch up phase, then going all the way and uh, getting more methodical, more rendered out and finally finishing up the piece from there. So this is the sketching stage. So this just means I'm kind of just scumbling around on the canvas, looking for the drawing, looking for uh, the space in between the overall shapes. Uh, shapes being the very key word here that I try to focus on. And uh, it's really shapes that make up things. So I'm looking for the big shapes and I start to make smaller and smaller shapes from that. That's how I draw and that's how I paint as well. So I look for big shapes and then I go smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's kind of my method, this kind of way I work. Um, so you can see I found my drawing, you know, I took, it took as much time as I need to. I can't ever stress enough, I say this every single video that you see me draw up, take as much time as you need to on the drawing because the drawing is the most important part. You don't want to mess up the foundations. If you mess up the foundations, your house is going to be skewed. Exactly the same thing happens here in painting, so remember that. From that, I'm starting into the hair, and I'm working a little bit at the background as well, just to sort of take away that stark white of the uh, gessoed up canvas. So the hair is just to help me, because I know the hair is pretty much going to be the darkest thing on my uh, painting here today. And so I just like to get that sort of mapped out, marked out of the way. Plus painting hair is a lot of fun. So I like doing that. <laughs> it's a plus plus for me. And then hitting in the background, I'm, I'm kind of letting it stain itself. So usually what you see is that artists come in with a stain, right? You'll see they'll have their canvas uh, stained up in a particular way, usually with like an earthy brown. Uh, if you're an impressionist, it's like, a, it's like a violet sort of a color. You know, things of that nature, you, you stain it to which sort of color hue you want to skew it towards. But doing this this way, uh, I'm kind of just working off the uh, background and I'm incorporating the stain as a part of the painting itself. So I'm making the stain not only just to uh, help me with the blues and stuff and then cool it out with the warms and the skin tones and stuff like that and have that polar opposite push-pull sort of feel, but I'm also using it as you know, like I said, part of the painting, something that's really interesting to look at, something that's interesting to see, something that's interesting to enjoy. So I, I'm using that in both parts to help me paint, but also to uh, express this uh, really interesting vision I have of the painting inside my head. Uh, so that's why I'm starting completely white and then the stain sort of progresses from there, right? From there, I start to map out, right? Her, her face, her face being the center of focus. You would have heard me talk about this in previous videos, but uh, not only do I work in big shapes to small shapes, but I also like to, for the most part, I like to work in a sort of uh, Zin Lim fashion where he talks about, Zin Lim the artist, uh, talks about uh, zoning, right? Uh, talking about how in this particular zone, be more refined, Outside of that zone is another zone, be less refined, and then the, however many zones you want to go out from there, right? And the idea is that the center zone, the focus of interest, is the more refined, more worked upon, more rendered out zone of interest. So that's kind of how I work, and that's how I'm working in this one as well, is with that zoning. Her face being the center of interest and everything that falls away from that, less and less and less so. It's very, it's quite a quite a modern type of way to uh, go for representational art. The, you see that they, they'll incorporate that strong rendering sort of power and finesse that comes with that, the beauty with that comes with that, but then also incorporate this sort of abstraction and the beauty of the deconstruction. And that's something I really enjoy looking at as well, personally. I really love that sort of mix and match of the two. It's really beautiful. So you can see with her skin, it's just really simple sort of block in. I'm not trying to refine anything right yet. And then uh, you can see I'm coming in with her sort of, I don't know what you would call it. I think it's like supposed to be a sort of a, a veil or something like that, but it's, it's tied into her hair and it's kind of flowing down from the back. That's kind of one, that was one of the point of interest that really interested me in this photos, how the light was hitting 
that uh that veil that that scarf hanging from her hair there um so that that's something that i really enjoyed putting into this as well like again just sort of coming into the uh second second painting stage about now ish where i've left it for that was the session done i got the block ins done and then this is the second stage where i'm taking those block ins and trying to pull them a bit further trying to refine them out using smaller brushes now uh using my uh, just using two filbits for this entire thing i'm just using a large filbit and like a medium sized filbit uh, I might have used a smaller filbit, but otherwise, just generally those those two brushes. I'm just trying to find those lighter areas, right? I'm not hitting my lightest light just yet. I'm I'm just kind of touching on those mid tones, right? I'm building those mid tones and finding those mid tones. It's a very interesting way to sort of see it, and and I'm really enjoying actually finding these sort of mid tones on her back. It's, it was really fun to to do that i found i found like it was like oh the way the lights playing off that that was really cool and so I, that was probably the most fun i had one of the one of the more fun things i was doing in this painting was uh, playing around with that and also playing around with the uh, shadows in her face so you, I'll, I'll talk about that later but that these two probably the most fun i had in this painting <laughs> but uh painting up her back there emphasizing some shadow something to sort of you know, play along with that sort of S type of uh, sort of line of uh, reading in, in that I have in mind for this painting is this S type of a curve, right? Um, but yeah, so the really, really fun part of the painting is kind of done, <laughs> you know, and now it's more into the meticulous sort of parts, right? more into the rendering out of things you know which is still fun as well but you know i've got to be a little bit more careful about you know how i want things to look and i want them to look particular ways right and i want them to look particular ways uh, in certain areas too you know some ways you know like i said gets further and further from the point of interest you know i'm kind of like eh, it's, it's okay i kind of you know a bit looser here but uh, especially around the point of interest with her hair and her face um, that sort of point of interest is where I want to like focus in, just dial in and just, you know, render it out as much as I can and as much as I see fit for the painting, you know, not every single painting, you're going to take it to the same rendering point, right? It comes with a lot of discernment, uh, from yourself to sort of, sort of gauge where you want to take things, right? Have a, have a, have a game plan before you come into the painting right before you start the painting just maybe you might find this helpful maybe just start write down uh, a couple of you know some ideas that you have about where you want to take this painting right and uh, you can check back in with those ideas at any point in the painting process right and so having these ideas jotted down then you can be like okay i've got a clear direction down for this painting i know exactly where i want to take it and i know exactly how i want to take it uh, how how i want to proceed to get to that point right and uh so it's really helpful to do that not only writing it out but thumbnails everybody like jumps this part right they're like oh thumbnails <laughs> I, I swear to god thumbnails help so much uh, there's been countless times in the past where I thought I had a great painting idea, right? I thought this is it. This would be the key. This would be banging. And I thumbnail it out before I started painting, thankfully. And I look at it and I'm like, ooh, yeah, in my head, <laughs> that, that looked and worked a lot better. On the thumbnail, that doesn't look so good. But there is a couple of parts about this thumbnail that I am liking. So what you do from there just take what you like start another thumbnail check it out on that thumbnail take what you like from that thumbnail start another one and so on th so forth right you're just taking bits that you like until you like the entire piece right that's kind of what i did here as well um and then on top of that uh, it also depends how serious is this painting you know obviously there's a level of seriousness that you should take into every single painting that you that you do right because we want to perform at our best right there's no sense of trying if we're not trying our best right uh we get the most progress and the most learning is done uh in our paintings in our work 
when we try our best and when we achieve our best in our paintings, right? If we half-ass it and we only go a little bit at a time and we go, oh, I was only half trying in that painting, then you kind of wasted your time, right? You kind of wasted your time, you wasted your energy. So it's very important to go for your best. And so with that being said, right, uh, I wanted to go for my best in this painting, but I also had the mindset of this isn't like a commission work. This isn't going to a gallery, right? So I can play around with it. So the mindset of I can play around with it is much different to uh, it's not that important, right? So I, I kind of find myself having the mindset of playing around with it, right? Rather than this, you know, doesn't matter. Right, I, I think that mindset is a lot more helpful uh, for a number of different reasons, which are probably very obvious. <laughs> but that mindset of let's play around, with it, let's see where we can take this, while at the same time I'm performing my best, I'm achieving my best. Uh, it's it's uh, you know I think as artists we kind of tend to lean towards well, we don't. The, the overall narrative, right, is that we sort of lean towards the uh, mediocrity sort of side of things and the excuses side of things, right? We kind of go, ah, well, you know, that was that happy accident, yada, 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 right? But when we sort of recalibrate our brain and we think, no, look, I'm striving to achieve my best. I'm striving to be the best that I can be, right? So... I want to put to death mediocrity, right? We all want to put to death. Well, anybody that's sane wants to put to death mediocrity, right? I want to do that on a daily basis. I really find that mediocrity is is what's going to really hold us all back, right? And I mean that not only for our painting, but for life in general, right? Being mediocre will get you pretty much nowhere. And especially in a gig like painting where, you know, you're, it's really only the top 1% that get recognized. And if you're not in the top 1%, you're probably, you know, not not doing so crash hot with your artistic practice, right? Uh, so being mediocre is very, very much something you want to put to death and you want to put to death real quick, right? That's something that I'm trying to do. You know, I'm, I'm striving as quickly as I can to get myself from... Uh, being okay, being good, and then being great. So, uh, uh, S Stephen Arnio, or Stephen Arnio, yeah, he talks about how good is the uh, enemy of great. Good's the enemy of great. And so, we want to strive for greatness, right? We want to strive for greatness in our artistic practice as well as our life, right? These things kind of interchangeable. And if anybody's painted uh, like uh, as long as I have or even longer, many people paint longer than me, uh, we, all, we all sort of often find the philosophical ideas that we have with painting also sort of flow into life uh, a lot of the times, uh, especially if you're more prone to think about those things. <laughs> Some people be like, no, nah, man, I just paint. But, you know, it, give, or, give or take, um, I kind of find myself thinking about that, hey, about taking myself from good to great. And, and the way I go about that process is, again, striving for my absolute excellency in my paintings, right? Striving to be the best that I can be in a painting. And then from there, uh, being playful with it so that I'm exploring. I'm not being com complacent with it and being like, ah, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm being playful, so I'm exploring and I'm expanding. But at the same time, I'm being the best that I ca possibly can be, right? And from there, I'm not overjudging myself with my failures. You know, I'm like, okay, that didn't work out so good. Next one, let's do that. Uh, and then whenever it, a good thing happens, like this painting, I think turned out rather well. I congratulate myself. Be your best. Uh, be your number one fan, right? Be your number one fan. Support yourself. Love yourself. And that way, you know, you don't sort of end up in this cycle of self-hatred and just like going, oh, God, I, I can't do anything right. Whenever good things happen, congratulate yourself, right? That's what we want to do. So... I finished filming and then I just did a couple more things to touch up this painting. 
I hope you all really enjoyed this painting process. Uh, it was really, it was a lot of fun to paint. I had a lot, a lot of fun to paint it, paint up this piece. Um, I played around with the shadows, putting some cooler tones into those shadow areas, and then uh, thicker paintbrushes and those lights, those those warmth and those blues. Played around with that sort of push and pull sort of feel with those colors, right? If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe, hit that bell, get notified, leave a comment down below. I'd love to read your feedback and I'll see you in the next video. Catch you guys.